What's going on guys? So uh, I just got back from the bank, picked up a bunch of stuff here, um, and we're going to talk about it a little bit here. So obviously you saw the title of the video, which has something to do with nickels. So that's predominantly what I got here, but when I'm at the bank I always usually ask, you know, about other things that they have. I usually ask if they have $2 bills. They did, they had three $2 bills. These are super common. These particular ones aren't anything special. I just like using those for tip money and stuff sometimes when I'm out and about. Um, and I also got some half dollars here, which also have nothing to do with this uh, video. I forget I mentioned it. Look through those. No silver. There's four rolls here I did not open yet. But that's to look through later. And I got a couple dollar coins. The presidential dollar coins I kind of collect. Um, trying to get you know all the different presidents. The Sacagaweas. There are a couple Sacagaweas that are worth big money. All right, but that is not one of them. So anyway, nickels. Now we're down to the nitty gritty here. So the big question is, why did I get a bunch of nickels? I got $200 worth of nickels here. The first bank I went through had uh, a couple boxes of these cases, which are $100 cases. Um, and the teller who I was talking to, you know, I said, hey, do you guys have some rolls of nickels? She's like, yeah, sure, how many do you want? I said, well, I want like three or $400 worth. And she said, okay. <laughs> and then as she was going back to the vault, the bank manager came over and uh, had somewhat of an attitude, and she's like, well, you know, you can't take all of them. And I said, okay, you know, she said, uh, are you a customer here? And I said, yeah, I'm a customer. So she asked if I can, uh, she could see my uh, debit card, and okay, so I got a debit card. And then the uh, teller came back, whatever, and she's like, well, I can only give you $100 worth. And I said, well, what are you saving the other ones for? She said, well, in case other customers want it. And I said, okay, because... <laughs> At that point, my brain's going, well, you know, this is why you're here. You're a bank. If I want money and I have uh, money to give you in exchange, in this case, I'm giving her bills for coins, you're supposed to give me whatever I want. I am the customer. I might be the first and last customer that's asking for this, but I get it. It's fine. Whatever. There's more than one person that comes in uh, that asks for different types of uh, rolled coins and stuff, so that's fine. So she gave me $100 worth. Then I went down the road quite a bit to another bank and got another $100 worth. The other bank didn't have a box. Uh, they actually don't go through a lot of nickels at all, so they just had the trays, which I love to have those trays from a bank, but, um, you know, I, I, maybe I could find them on eBay or something, but usually they'll be like, here, here's trays of them if they're loose like this, but uh, we need the trays back. So I went and brought them in the car and brought her the trays back. So I got $200 worth of nickels. Now, the reason I got these nickels is because with all the world events going on, base metal prices have gone up. Up, up, up. I believe copper hit an all-time high, which was close as five bucks. And nickel also went sky high recently. Now, some of you out there probably collect some old pennies or know people who collect old pennies. Now, there's dozens of individual specific pennies that are worth hundreds or thousands of dollars because of the rarity. They could be, you know, uh, missed strikes or you know, broken dies or very specific ones that are super collectible for the actual coin collectors. Uh, and a lot of people out there know that 1909 up until 1982, pennies were actually copper, right? We all think pennies are copper, uh, but they switched that uh, from 1982 and before pennies were 95% copper and 5% zinc, but the price of copper went up. So they switched it, right? So a lot of people collect them because those old pennies are actually worth about three cents a piece in copper. Now, technically, it's illegal to melt uh, U.S. currency, so it's not like you can take a bunch of pennies and melt them. Uh, although I can say that if you did that, there's no way to prove that they were pennies. Now you just have a blob of copper um, with a little bit of zinc mixed in. But, uh, but yeah, those pennies are worth three times their face value. Now, if you're into silver, you would know that pre-65, uh, you know, quarters, half dollars, dimes, they were all 90% silver. Our money in America used to be real money. It used to be made out of gold and silver. We set that standard when we started this country. Our money was supposed to actually have value. And at some point in 1964, the government realized that the price of silver was going up and that people are just gonna start you know, melting it. And that's exactly what people did. They hoarded change and, and they melted it for the silver because it was worth more than it was as a coin. You know, imagine, your dollar bill, you know, you have a paper dollar bill. For some reason, you can rip that paper dollar bill up into a bunch of pieces and hand it to someone and they would give you $2 back. You know what I mean? That's 
just, you know, a strange analogy that I just came up with, but that's what it was. People realized, why am I spending this, you know, at, for its face value when it's worth more? So then they switched the composition of it so it didn't have any silver in it anymore. Well, recently, nickels surpassed their face value. So obviously we know uh, an American nickel is worth five cents, right? Face value. However, it's worth more like eight cents now in its copper and nickel melt value. All right, so a dollar worth of nickels, these are obviously $2 rolls, but half this roll in nickels is really worth $1.71 in copper and nickel. So I kind of had the idea that I would get some nickels from the bank. I posted this on uh, Instagram, because uh, you guys know I, I follow precious metals, but once in a blue moon, I'll look at the base metals and stuff, just out of curiosity to see how things are moving. Uh, we have a lot of industrial demand in our country. We're constantly building things, and you know, eventually, you know, this stuff runs out. You have to keep mining it. You have to keep making it, right? Well, we don't actually make it, but we take it from the ground and we process it, and then we use that as a raw material to build things. So, yeah, I heard that uh, nickel price was going up. Looked on um, Coinflation, which is a fantastic site for information like this, and saw that a dollar face value of American nickels is really worth a dollar seventy-one. Then I looked it up and started reading some articles, and I believe there was talks about. Uh, the government changing the composition of the nickel because a nickel is 25% nickel, actual nickel, the metal, and 75% copper. Um, and they knew the same thing. Eventually, it was going to surpass its face value, which it has done. So, you know, whether it happened now, because I want to say that one of the articles, I think they switched it in 2020, but I can't confirm that. I don't know if they're still making nickels out of the same materials or not. Uh, but obviously, for decades now, um, ever since 1946, nickels have been 25% nickel and 75% copper. So I would say even if they did change it, the majority of nickels you'll find just in your, your pocket change will be that composition. Here's an interesting fact that I read in a silver book recently. Um, if you bought a brand new Mustang, a base model Mustang back in 1964, and you paid for it in quarters, you could take those exact same quarters and buy a brand new Mustang today. Even with all the inflation, even with the, the jacked up prices, you could still do that because back in 1964, those quarters were made out of 90% silver and that silver value has not only held its value all these years, but gained value. And as of right now, you'd probably have even more because people are paying like 21, $22 face for uh, constitutional silver, you know, or 90% junk silver. So they have even more of a collectible value than they do uh, for silver value. Pretty interesting fact, right? But I was born in 1984. I missed the days where, you know, our American money was actually worth something. Um, but this is like my attempt, my generation, uh, you know, my little attempt, a very minuscule, tiny attempt at uh, saving on to some coins, hoarding just a little bit of coins, uh, just in case if nickel continues to rise and copper continues to rise in the future, um, and the government certainly changes our change, this will grow in value. Now the idea, uh, because obviously storage becomes an issue, what I wanted to do with this is I wanted to, right now I have $200 worth of nickels, I wanna eventually get maybe $500, maybe a thousand, it's not a huge priority right now at all, but you know, over time, um, as long as they're continuously making these the same. Uh, but I like to store that in the bottom of one of my safes. And the idea is to make the safe even heavier. My safes are bolted to both the ground as well as the wall. Uh, however, the harder it is to get a safe out, the better. So even though it's bolted down uh, and shouldn't move if they happen to break those loose or something, I want the safe to be as incredibly heavy as possible. And a lot of old timers would put a lot of like 40% silver, even like the nickels. If you have wartime nickels, they're 35% silver, but you need a lot of them to have some decent value, right? But some people have, you know, a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, you know, or if you have like 40% Kennedy halves, I know a lot of you know, silver uh, stackers, they'll put those in their gun safes, you know, and, and it's basically just to weigh it down. Why not? You're saving silver, uh, but there's a lot of bulk there in order to have some value, you know what I mean, compared to like the 90% halves. Um, I'd love to be able to have, you know, 5,000 40% Kennedy halves in the bottom of my safe, but that's significantly more money than stacking regular old nickels. So this is something that I can do that's very budget friendly that you could do if you choose to do this. And the worst case scenario, very worst case scenario, copper drops dramatically in price, don't think it'll happen anytime soon, and nickel drops dramatically in price, don't think it'll happen very soon. But let's say 
you know, the metals themselves are worthless, well, guess what? You still have a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, whatever you happen to save, in change. So if there's ever another change shortage or something, well, not for you. You have change. You can obviously diversify. You can just get a, a couple rolls of quarters as well, some pennies, you know, some dimes, whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. Now, for me, it's just a no-lose situation because worst case scenario, uh, this never really grows in value. Well, I'm just throwing a couple hundred dollars, you know, in change at the bottom of the safe. It's making the safe heavier. It's making it harder to steal. And, you know, push comes to shove. If I need some change, I have change. Anyway, just wanted to uh, share this wacky idea. It is wacky. Not a lot of people are going to do this, but it's an affordable way to not only <laughs> put a little bit of uh, money away in a savings account, so to speak, a little savings account, uh, but you're also, you know, if you happen to have a gun safe or safe with uh, other important things, the heavier it is, the harder it is to steal, right? If you can't open the thing, uh, even if you got two or three guys, uh, let's say you have $5,000 in nickels at the bottom of your safe, that's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, I don't know the math off of, you know, what a, a nickel weighs or what a roll weighs, you know, and then multiplying that by, you know, how many dollars you have in nickels, but it's a lot. It's very heavy. I could tell you even just this little box is, it's got to be at least, you know, 15, 20 pounds. Um, so yeah, if you put a couple hundred dollars or even a couple thousand dollars in the bottom of your safe of any coins, really, uh, it's a great idea just to make that even harder to steal, but you're really just saving money. Um, I'm tempted to go through these because I, I do love war nickels. You know, like I said, they are 35% silver, but I'm not going to waste the time. I don't want to break these open. I like to keep them in rolls. So, and especially this in a box, um, just in case I do have to go back to the bank and, and swap it back to regular cash. Uh, if I need to spend it for some reason, it, it makes it a lot easier than having bags and bags and bags of loose nickels. That's not going to fly. And unless your bank has one of those coin machines, you know, it, it's not going to be very easy to get rid of that. And if you use like a coin star or something, you know, a, a public coin machine, they're obviously going to take a big chunk of that, you know, as a, a percentage for the convenience of using the machine. I can tell you they opened uh, several bank accounts <laughs> across Pennsylvania. Uh, so I have a lot of different places I could stash a little bit of money here and there. I really did it because a couple of those banks do have coin machines that I can use for free, which is really nice, especially when I'm coin hunting. If I get four or $500 you know, in quarters to, to coin hunt, um, that's not easy to bring back to the bank in rolls. It takes way too much time and too much effort. So I have a couple like heavy duty containers. I throw it loose in there. I go to the coin machine. I dump it all in and I get every penny back in cash, which is really, really nice. So if you are coin hunting, um, Definitely look in your areas and see what kind of banks might have a uh, coin machine available to their customers for free. But anyway, that is it for now. I'm hoarding nickels, kind of. Like I said, it's not a top priority. There's bills to be paid. There's, uh, you know, I still have a massive interest in gold and silver, trying to stack that as much as possible, as often as possible, and throw in constantly wanting new knives and gear, uh, not only just to test out, but to do videos on and stuff. It, it's not... It's not number one. I'm not just spending all my money on nickels, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to stash a little bit away. Like I said, nothing else, just put money in the bank, so to speak. But uh, it's also serving other purposes. All right, guys, so before I go, I will uh, mention for the handful of people who might ask about those uh, half dollars, if any of them were silver, there was one Kennedy half dollar that does have silver content. Uh, however, um, it has a hole in it, <laughs> all right? So... Someone put in a diamond-shaped hole or a square, I guess, depending on how you're looking at that. I don't know why. And, of course, it's right over the year. So as I was looking at the, uh, the rims of all the coins, this looked to me like a 40 percenter. It's 19-something-7. So I got the um, Sound Money Metals pocket pinger here. All right, got the app open. So I checked it out. When I put it on uh, 1964, which would be 90%, I got one out of three stars, which tells me there's silver content, but not 90%, right? So I put it on the Kennedy here. This is the 40% Kennedys from 65 to 70. And we'll go ahead and give a check here again, but I'm getting two out of three stars pretty consistently. That one happened to be three out of three. Try that again. And that's two out of three. So it's going back and forth between two out of three and three out of three. Uh, because of this hole here, that is going to change the acoustics of the, uh, the coin itself. Uh, plus, you know, it's literally a hole, so there's a little bit of material missing. 
which would um, also throw off that tester. Um, I don't have that wood dowel, which I do like actually using the dowel, but you can use it without, obviously, as long as the coin is uh, centered here. It does uh, still ping, totally fine. So yeah, one of those was silver. Still gonna conclude there was 40% silver. And it's probably a 1967 Kennedy half dollar, but we will literally never know because someone put a hole in it. So anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.